Well, to talk about China's foreign policy in South Power, I'm joined from Beijing by my colleague Chen Ruo Shu. He's a senior fellow of the Pangol Institution and the host of CGTN's Dialogue Weekend. A very early good morning to you. Good evening, Gerard. Hi there. So, China's economy has grown at breakneck speed and along with it, its global influence. Broadly speaking, how have you seen its role on the world stage evolve, especially in the last few decades? Well, mostly economic role, I would say, uh, in particular with the Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, you know, uh, basically, China is looking, uh, I would say, outward um, instead of uh, exclusively focusing on domestic construction. So you see, you know, after accumulating of this capital for decades, so there's, uh, I think China was ready basically to invest in most, mostly developing countries, uh, in particular in infrastructure construction, for example, bridges, road, you know, airports, et cetera. Uh, because we know, for example, even in Asia, uh, there's a lack of trillions of uh, infrastructure investment. So most of the investment are welcomed throughout the developing uh, uh, world, I would say. Uh, you know, along with that, probably you may come more and more, you know, people to people exchange between the Chinese investors, Chinese business people, Chinese students, Chinese scholars with their counterparts from other countries. So in that sense, you do see, oh, there's a rise of Chinese influence, uh, in, mostly in developing countries and also uh, probably in developed countries uh, world too, uh, because also similarly, there are some investment needs over there. I'm glad you brought up the Belt and Road Initiative because it's such a central platform to the policy. Uh, where do you actually see the Belt and Road Initiative growing in the next five, ten years? Uh, well, of course, you know, there's uh, with this recent uh, concluded meeting of G7 summit, uh, you know, the uh, US and other developed uh, countries has made a proposal uh, basically to counter uh, BRI, uh, you know, the, I think there's anticipation of the Chinese influence will continue to grow. So somehow uh, the Western countries need to counter to balance that kind of uh, influence. Um, so in that sense, I would say uh, it actually, um, you know, confirmed the, the role played by BRI mm. or growing influence of BRI. Uh, so in that sense, uh, most of the people would say uh, that influence will continue to grow uh, because if you look at the World Bank, their report, uh, you know, worldwide, there's a huge need of infrastructure instruction. As we said, if you look at the U.S. Uh, government efforts to pass the bills, one of them, of course, is infrastructure bill. Uh, that's the investment in the basic needs, uh, physical uh, needs for connecting the country. Uh, in that sense, BRI basically to, is to connect uh, you know, countries inside the country or among countries. So in that sense, it will continue to grow because partly as the Chinese economy continues to expand, and China's uh, connection, for example, with the Central Af uh, Asian countries, uh, with uh, with the European countries, uh, going through this uh, Eura Eurasian continent, uh, there is a need, uh, in growing grow need for, for transport of goods, transport of people, etc. And if you look at the African continent, I mean, the demand is huge, and uh, there's mm -hmm. still a huge demand for more investment from China and from many other countries. And Chindro, uh, apart, you know, away from economics, there are also all these other areas, right? Climate, space, public health, among others, where we're really seeing China take the lead now. How do these enhanced uh, roles and responsibilities fit into China's vision for global governance? Well, for China, you know, uh, in a sense, you know, um, China is more Chinese. Uh, rather than, you know, uh, politically, people would say, oh, the Western countries mostly democ uh, democracy, where China is a non-democracy. Some would say China is uh, it's more, if you look at the tradition, it's more centralized system. And, the, and, and that kind of system, and that kind of culture, I would say Chinese culture, you can see uh, the, the, the Communist Party of China, the Chinese central government, they are playing a very important role in planning development of the nation, in implementing and enforcing uh, those plans, usually long-term plans, for example, you know, space exploration, or five-year plans, or 2035, 2049, uh, etc. That's long-term plans. It needs, uh, I would say, very well uh, coordinated efforts not only from the right. government side, but also from the provincial government and the grassroots efforts, as well as the private sector, the participation of Chinese individuals. 
so far, we have seen, you know, uh, quite successful implementation in many, many other, in many areas. And that's why we do see uh, this very impressive progress in the areas you have mentioned earlier. Perfect. Uh, and the, the belief is like, you know, it will continue uh, mm -hmm. that kind of trend for years to come. Great. Hendro Shu, thank you so much for your time. We always appreciate it.